You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. What you are about to hear is real. The prophets wrote of a time when the signs of the end would be seen. This is where Bible prophecy and current events collide. This is Unsealed. Yes, my friends, welcome back. This is Unsealed. I am Christopher Manti, your brother, hopefully your brother in the Lord. Um, if not, I recommend you get with Jesus ASAP. I um, apologize for the voice quality today. A little under the weather, a little nasally. But uh, we'll get through it somehow. Um, and so I praise God for today, another day to serve Him, even though I'm inadequate. But He, um, he makes up for that, right? So... I pray you are blessed as well and ready to uh, engage together as believers, as the church, because that's what we're supposed to do. Serve God as we do it and each other. Amen? Preach the gospel. All that good stuff. In Jesus' name. Okay. Uh, this is Unsealed. We've been off the air for a little bit here. Not off the air, but just <clears throat> preoccupied with other things. And that's Okay. This is now episode 24, episode 24 of our awesome, fantastic podcast. Please share this. Sharing is caring. If you do nothing else, share this. Please would be great. Um, of course, giving to support the podcast would be great, too. Go to unsealedpodcast.com. You get resources there, books and apps and um, courses and all kinds of stuff, and then Obviously, share that around and get the previous episodes, all 23 before today. We covered a whole bunch of stuff. It's really um, just centered on the prophecies of the Bible and not much commentary. Try not to be anyways. So let's go to today, which is Luke 21. And uh, it's not really tough, this chapter, but we make it. We make it so. And so let's take a look. Uh, open your Bibles to Luke 21. Now, clearly, you've heard every prophecy teacher, you know, pastor, Bible guy on YouTube, always refer to Matthew 24 when we talk about the signs of Jesus coming, his return. And obviously that's not wrong. Good morning to you, brothers and sisters, by the way. Wherever you're listening or watching, please chime in, whether it's on Spreaker on the app here or on Facebook or YouTube, Twitter, etc. So let me know you're there. If you have a question, comment, or concern, just type it in, and I'll try to get to it before we leave the air, okay? Deal. Ask anything you'd like, but specifically Luke 21. Okay, so most people say, Matthew 24, look to that for the signs of Christ coming. Yep. <clears throat> But that's not the only place, because Mark 13 is almost the exact same thing as Matthew 24. Why don't we ever reference Mark 13? It's almost verbatim. The message, they say, well, okay, we don't need to see it twice. Well, the Lord said we need to see it twice. Uh, and then there's Luke 21, which almost never gets mentioned, because... There's an assumption that this chapter doesn't refer to the future about the return of Jesus, but actually was fulfilled in 70 AD. This is an error. Let's take a look to show you why. Uh, the chapter begins with a very famous tale as well about the widow's mites, right? The poor widow who did nothing but serve God, and she's been a widow for years and years, and 
A mite is... That's what we call a small bug now. Like a tick. That's how small the money was. It was like a fraction of a penny. So she put in those two mites that day. And Jesus saw it. And he said, This poor widow has put in more than everyone else. A lot of people are putting in their $100 bills, okay? They're writing their checks for $1,000. Around and passing the plate. And the human... You know, the flesh understanding is, well, they're, they're giving more. Obviously, two cents versus $1,000, that's not even close. How could you compare those? But he said, for out of all their abundance, those who are rich have put in their offerings for God, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had. It's about percentages, friends, okay? If I have a million dollars, a thousand dollars is nothing. If I have two cents, then two cents is everything. And she gave it to the house of God, my father's house, called the temple. All right, then we keep talking about the temple, because then as some spoke of the temple and how it was adorned with beautiful stones and donations... Oh, you see that? That was, you know, so-and-so contributed and got his name on that. Or, you know, he paid for that wall hanging or that precious stone over there. He said to them, these things which you see, the days will come which not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. So they asked him, saying, teacher, rabbi, But when shall these things be, and what shall the sign be when these things are about to take place? Uh, What things? About the destruction of the temple where every stone will be thrown down. Uh, Well, that happened in 70 AD, Brother Manti. No, it did not. I I can go to Israel, and I have been, and I've seen... Many of you have seen. You don't need to even be there. You go search the video. There is stone still standing from when Jesus said that. Is Jesus a liar? I don't think so. Uh, So we await fulfillment, number one. I've heard, believe me, and I know I've heard the theories. Well, it's actually just an outer wall, and uh, it really wasn't part of the temple. I think we're, I think we're trying to make history fit the prophecy instead of vice versa. Let God speak the word and let it be fulfilled exactly as He said it. But I digress. And He said, verse eight, take heed. That you not be deceived. It sounds a lot like Matthew 24, Mark 13. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he. I am the Messiah. Or even Jesus. And, so they'll say, I am he. And the time is drawn near. Therefore do not go after them. The time of what? The destruction or the return of Jesus. I am, I am the guy. The time's here. But, verse 9, but when you hear of wars and commotions, or wars and rumors of wars, do not be terrified, for these things must come to pass first. But the end will not come immediately. Again, it's consistent messaging. Sounds like Matthew 24. But even in this, there's nuggets of, of, of truth and, um, it's not the right way to say it. There's nuggets of, uh, there's something to mine from this, okay, that you can dig up and apply right now about commotions and being terrified of things that must happen first. Where we are told very plainly not to fear. Because if you're not saved, you will be fearing. 
In other words, the world will be very afraid indeed. That's part of our witness to say, yeah, I'm not afraid because I know who, who has me, who owns me, and he, but he already told me this would happen. And just like with Matthew 24, Mark 13, when he says wars and commotions and rumors of wars, this is not generic warfare. This is not uh, the Roman army. Or even the armies after that. This is a period before the end, before the end of the age, before Jesus returns, that there are wars and commotions. So it's a specific time. Not World War I. That was a big one. World War II, even bigger. But not what Jesus was referring to. Uh, Verse 10. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And we just heard that in our intro, right? Again, uh, just like the Matthew and Mark. And just like them, it refers to Isaiah 19. Did you know? Kingdom against kingdom refers to Isaiah 19, which ties in with Daniel 11, etc., 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 meaning... This is, again, not just some generic uh, statement that nations will be fighting each other. Well, no, duh. That's always happened. Jesus isn't saying these things are going to be the same. It was happening in, when he said it. <clears throat> it was happening before he said it. It was happening after he said it. Wars happen. Kingdoms fight each other. Just what happens. Never stopped. It has never stopped. Unless he's referring to something specific that you would drive you to the scriptures to find out what that is, and we're not going to do that today. Well, we have done it in previous episodes, so go go back. Uh, we talked about Isaiah 19 a bunch, um, including last episode, I believe. Um, also episode 15. Anyway, go to the back catalog. Um, okay, kingdom against kingdom. And not only that, which is the first three and a half years period we're talking about of the final seven and there will be great earthquakes in various places famines and pestilences and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven little more detail than matthew and mark but still the same narrative okay right plainly and it's the same answer to the same question what will the signs be of your coming when the temple is destroyed what will be the signs of that before well, he just told you the signs were before. Kingdom against kingdom, earthquakes, famines, pestilence, and signs from heaven. Before the temple is really destroyed with no stone laid uh, left upon another. But before all these things, the great and fearful sights from heaven, which is what? Again, from Matthew 24, etc., and of course the Old Testament... This is before the day of the Lord, okay? These great signs in heaven herald the day of the Lord. but So that's at the very end. That's when Jesus is going about to return. But before all these things, those great signs from heaven and fearful sights, before all those things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You'll be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. <clears throat> Pardon me. Well, how how long, but when it says before all these things, how long before do you think he's talking about? 70 AD, 2,000 years before? And who's he talking to? When he says persecute you, delivering you, those, actually, those words aren't actually in the Panion script. It's just lay their hands on you and persecute, delivering up. Synagogues and prison. Synagogue is just an assembly. Could mean a church. Could mean a mosque. Uh, and throw it in jail. And before kings and rulers from my name. Are you ready for that? So again, if it's in the context of Jesus is not being obtuse and uh, all of a sudden shifting from the end of the age all the way to 2,000 years beforehand, then this applies to the time of the end. So there's a great persecution that comes before the day of the Lord. Yeah. Right. It's called the Great Tribulation. Uh, 
which is what Matthew 24 and Mark 13 says. So again, we have more details, but there's no different story. Verse 13. But when you are brought before those kings and rulers, it will turn out for you as an occasion for your testimony. That's, that is the bottom line, you guys. And we're in an age, well, we're in a period right now with an election coming up and everyone's concerned. Well, all you have to worry about is your witness. It doesn't matter what government is in control. It doesn't matter what king is there. God's ordained it. You don't have to fight it. You just provide the witness when you have the opportunity, which should be every day. But when you're brought before these rulers, they're probably not good rulers, okay? Whatever party they're in or whatever. But that's not your concern. Your concern is to give the testimony when it's presented. When the chance is presented. Therefore, settle it in your hearts. Not to meditate beforehand what you will answer. In other words, you want the spirit to speak through you. You don't want it to be from your mind or anything of your flesh. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. Well, that's pretty awesome. Thank you, Jesus. You will be betrayed. End time stuff here, guys. You will be betrayed, even by parents and brothers, relatives and friends. And they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake. But yet, not a hair of your head shall be lost. But in your patience, your standing firm, your resilience, possess your souls. That's the point of standing and witnessing, even though you die. When he says not a hair of your head should be lost, it doesn't mean you're not forgotten. It means you're not going to really die. A man, if he believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Do you believe this? Don't lose your soul. You can lose your soul. That's what Jesus is saying here. You can lose your soul if you are not patient. If you don't wait this thing out to the end of the tribulation period, if you don't wait for the signs in heaven where the day of the Lord shows up, if you think it's earlier than that, if you're planning on escaping before that, rethink it. Because you can lose your soul. You can lose your salvation. That's what it means. Now, here's the part. All of a sudden, oh yeah, that's all end times. Yep, 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 that definitely agrees. But all of a sudden, even though we've talked about the period before the temple is destroyed, that period of kingdom against kingdom, which is, I think you can prove, is the first half of the final seven years. And now we come to the second half. But all of a sudden, we say, no, no, this is talking about 70 AD in verse 20. But when you see, now listen, he didn't break the narrative at all, right? Okay, possess your souls, stand firm to the end, you're going to be persecuted, you're going to be thrown in jail. And then all these signs are going to come to pass while it's happening. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then you know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea, that's the area around Jerusalem, central Israel, okay, flee to the mountains. That means leave Judea. Let those who are in the midst of her depart. Leave. And let not those who are in the country enter her. In other words, the surrounding areas. Don't come in, okay? If you're not there, don't come in. You need to flee to the mountains. And I wrote a book called Flee to the Mountains, specifically on this verse and where those mountains are, and how that will all happen. It's all in the scriptures, guys. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. 
How is this different than Matthew 24, Mark 13? How are you going to put that in another time period? Were the days of vengeance when every scripture was fulfilled in 70 AD? Certainly not. And if that offends you, that means you're a preterist and you need to change your uh, view. So says the Lord, okay? Because <laughs> these things haven't happened. The Lord has not returned, which it has to happen. He says all things which are written. That includes the day of the Lord. That includes the return of Jesus. That includes conquering the enemies of Israel, liberating Jerusalem, etc. That hasn't happened. Anyway. But this is a key piece of information that Matthew 24 doesn't have, which is there. He just refers you to Daniel and says, just like Daniel the prophet told you, when you see the abomination of desolation, flee to the mountains. But this is the saying the same thing. The abomination of desolation is the invasion of Jerusalem by the surrounding armies. That means all the nations around her, led by the Antichrist, will invade Jerusalem and win. Why did he tell you to flee then? The Jews have to have a remnant that survive. They have to call for Yeshua to come and save them. That's part of the drama, you guys. That's part of the story. That also is written, and that will be fulfilled as well. Will you be there beforehand to prepare those mountains and receive them? Is my question. The days of vengeance. This is the wrath of God. This is the bowls of wrath. Even the trumpets, if you want to think about that. All things written be fulfilled. But woe to those who are pregnant, to those who are nursing babies in those days. Now we're back to Matthew 24. For there will be great distress or tribulation in the land and wrath upon this people. That's, again, extra details to let you know this is not a spiritual uh, verse. This is not something you can spiritualize away or say it has nothing to do with Israel. Jacob's trouble is the great tribulation, and you're going to be here. Church, you have a role to play. You can't just watch it from the sideline, head to the bunker, gather in America, and wait it out, okay? That's not what God's calling us to do. Great tribulation in the land of Israel and wrath upon this people, the Jews. Satan's wrath is against the Jews first, Revelation 12. Just like the gospel is to the Jew first, then the Gentile, same thing with Satan. He's going out to the Jews first. And those who escape, where what? Flee to the wilderness, or the mountains, where the earth helps them and swallows this flood that comes after them from Satan. So guys, it's the same story. And they will fall, those who don't escape, they will fall. This people, the wrath upon them, this is the wrath of Satan. They will fall by the edge of the sword. They'll be led away, captive, into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. That's 70 A.D.? No, there was a, in, yes, there was an attack, there was a dispersion, there was a conquering of Jerusalem, and all that's true, but the temple wasn't fully destroyed. The times of the Gentiles were not fulfilled, okay, why? Revelation 11 tells us that when they are fulfilled. When there's a new temple, well, let's look at it. Revelation 11, I was given a read like a measuring rod. The angel said, rise and measure the temple of God, the altar and those who worship there, but leave out the court which is outside the temple. Do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles. And here's the time of the Gentiles. Ready? They will tread the holy city 
Jerusalem underfoot, that means they invade it, for 42 months. The time of the Gentiles is 42 months, three and a half years. Could not be clearer. So how long does the invasion last from when the abomination of desolation and the invasion of Jerusalem until it's over? Their time is three and a half years. They will be trampled for three and a half years. That's called Jacob's trouble. That's called the Great Tribulation. None of this is 70 AD, folks. Please, please, take this information and use it. Verse 25. There will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and on the earth, distress of nations. Now this is what? At the end of the time of the Gentiles, the tribulation comes to an end when Jesus returns. Signs, sun, moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress. This is the prophets, this is Joel, this is Isaiah. Day of the Lord is starting. The day of the Lord is starting. Men's hearts failing them from fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Everything will be shaken when the Lord comes. Then they will what? They will see. Who will see? Uh, the whole earth will see it together. They will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. That's the return of Jesus. Obviously, that's not the rapture before the seven years, okay? This is the end. Right. Same story, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Now when these things begin to happen, look up, lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Now you can apply that generally if you want, or even the beginning of the seven years, but it's really talking about the very end, the final signs, the signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. It is at that point when your redemption, the redemption of your body, the resurrection, called the rapture if you want to, that's at the very end when Jesus returns. There's no running off to somewhere else first. You're just changed if you're alive. The resurrection is near once those final signs begin in the heavens because that's the wrath of God. That's, that's it, right? But then, just like in the other chapters, what do we get? A parable. He spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. Uh, Jeremiah, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, boy, I'm failing here. There's a parable of the good and bad figs, Jeremiah. I'll remember it later. Look at all the trees when they are already, and they, it's about Jerusalem and about Israel. That's the point. Jeremiah 24. When they are already budding, the trees, you see and know for yourselves that the summer is now near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. The millennium, the millennial reign is near. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation, the one who sees these things, will by no means pass away till all those things take place. Not the 70 AD generation, not the disciples generation. By the way, some of them, some of that generation died before 70 AD, so that's not even a... Anyway, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. And finally, the exhortation to watch. To, yes, especially to us, those upon whom the end of the age has come. Take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with, I don't want to use this version, carousing drunkenness and cares of this life. Okay, this is, what does this mean? Elections, your rights, the government, uh, sports, uh, uh, anything that distracts you. By d Don't let your hearts be dulled. Dulled. Sleepy. Lazy. 
carousing, partying, being drunk. Well, just say, well, the heck with this. I'm getting drunk. And by the worries of this life, don't let that day catch you unaware. Don't let it come upon you unexpectedly. And the only way it will come, this is what I'm trying to tell folks. Oh, well, Jesus said, no man knows the day of the hour. He only says the ones in darkness are not going to know. Repeatedly. Many Thessalonians, in Revelation, here. The ones who are not going to know he's coming are the ones who were drunk and who were weighed down with the cares of this life. Even eating and drinking, or what you're going to wear, like Matthew 6. Don't worry about that stuff. Worry about witnessing for Jesus, especially as these signs occur. Because then you won't be caught. Unexpectedly by it. You'll know it's coming. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. The world, the ones who don't believe. Don't be like an unbeliever. You can lose your soul. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass. Escape means endure so they don't affect you. Just like Revelation 3. Just like John 17. It doesn't mean get away into another country, you know, into a different world. It means that you would stand firm and be faithful. So the wrath of God doesn't apply to you. And it won't. If you're his. If you stay faithful and don't lose your soul. Be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. At daytime he was teaching in the temple. That's what you just heard. But at night he went out and stayed on the mountain called Olivet, the Olive Mount of Olives, which is one of his locations when he returns. All right, that's Luke 21, guys. Um, Well, no, it's the last verse. Sorry, let's get it right. Then, early in the morning, all the people came to him in the temple to hear him. And that's what it's going to be like in the millennium. Amen? All right. Hallelujah. All right, guys, that's it. Um, Again, no commentary necessary, okay? Don't get bogged down. It's going to get harder and harder and harder to not be bogged down if we're not in the spirit. If you let yourself slip into all these th- distractions, guys, it's not just an American election. It's not just this thing right in front of us now, even though it's a big deal to those of us who live here because th- the devil is at work, okay? Um, but anything that might come up. Jesus desires all of you. I mean, every inch of, every molecule in your being so give it to him. Listen, just believe. So, again, there it is. I don't see, truly, I mean, I don't really get it whatsoever how this could apply to 70 AD. It's the same darn story. Don't get it twisted. Just because it adds a detail about Jerusalem being surrounded by armies and the temple being destroyed? Well, yeah. That's what Daniel says. <laughs> same story. Not different. And it shows you that, yes, we'll be here. Yes, we play a role. Yes, we have to provide those places in the mountains for the Jews who flee. Yes, we have to tell them to flee because they're not going to hear it from anywhere else. They're not going to be reading the New Testament, folks. They don't even read the Old Testament, folks. (sighs) All right. Praise the Lord. Uh, That's it for this episode of Unsealed. Um, yeah, we're going to close that out and, uh, I will answer some questions here on the live video feed, uh, as a bonus for those folks. So if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, uh, and hit the bell, by the way, so you get notified, uh, go to the Wings of the Eagle YouTube channel and Facebook page and like and share, 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 
everywhere. All right. And don't forget, again, past episodes to support us. The book called Fleet of the Mountains, again, like I've been talking about, that's full online course called End Times for Beginners, and an app called End Time Church. All that stuff, you can find at unsealedpodcast.com. So until next time, this is Christopher Manti. Stay in his word, stay in his way, stay in the spirit. And Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, we need you. To hear previous episodes, to obtain resources, and to support this ministry, visit unsealedpodcast.com. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved.